Good afternoon, and thanks for coming this evening, guys. Uh, my name is Jonathan Meyer. Um, I'm from Applied Information Sciences out of Dayton, Ohio. Uh, and my background has mostly been in um, GIS uh, web application development. Uh, I've been doing a lot of work uh, the last few years uh, with um, Leaflet, Open Layers, um, and a lot on the back end with uh, GeoServer and Postgres. Uh, a little bit of uh, GeoServer development um, that was submitted back to the core, but mostly on um, serving data into uh, Postgres and then uh, served up through GeoServer. Um, so this is going to be mostly a, a demo, um, interactive session. Um, I've got a few slides just to give an overview of uh, what I'm going to be showing, but uh, feel free to ask questions at any point. Um, I'm happy to, happy to answer any questions you may have. So. Um, Motivation for what I'm showing here today was we had um, thousands of images a day, uh, time series data that we wanted to be able to uh, preview in both a um, composite mosaic, um, so say see all the images for a day, or um, preview a single image to see the quality. So these were, um, a lot of these images are very large, um, six gigabytes. So if somebody wanted to download them and do processing, um, and then see that the data is bad, that was, that was no good. So we wanted a way to be able to preview them um, individually as well. Um, so all of the data, um, we were wanting it to be exposed through uh, standards, so um, most of you are very familiar with these um, OGC standards um, using WMS specifically. Uh, WMS supports uh, time parameter. Um, and the core standard, so uh, we're going to be uh, using that today. Uh, the data set that we're going to use is VIRS. Um, so this is, this is stuff that you heard about earlier today. Um, really great presentation from the NASA folks. Um, I did not retrieve this data from Gibbs. I retrieved it from uh, University of Wisconsin, Madison. Uh, they had pre-processed GeoTIFF data. So it was already um, in a form that was, was very easy to use for uh, the purposes of this demonstration. The software that we're going to be using um, is Postgres with the PostGIS extensions installed, uh, GeoServer, uh, specifically using GeoServer 2.7 today, um, and OGC Preview, which is a, is a tool that um, I worked on and other people at my company worked on uh, specifically to <coughs> provide some things that were missing from uh, GeoServer. So if those of you that are familiar with GeoServer know that if you have um, time series data or time enabled layers in GeoServer, it, there's no good way to preview it out of the box. The layer preview just shows you the last time slice of data, which is a pretty big deficiency. Uh, so we developed this tool um, that would allow you to play through the data, um, not in a, an animation style, but step, step through manually. Um, primarily focused on vector data originally, but I'm, I'm just using it for the purpose of, of playing through the, um, the raster data. Um, as far as automation, so there was a fantastic workshop yesterday. Um, Steve put on about Docker and um, standing up a Postgres inside of OpenShift on Kubernetes. Um, so if, if you guys are experts with Docker, GeoServer, and Postgres, a lot of this stuff is, is going to be beginner level, but it's kind of putting all the pieces together. Um, the GeoServer REST API is what is used to um, create, or, or in this demo, we're going to be creating data stores and layers based on configs that were um, stored on the file system. So I'm just making some uh, curl requests uh, using, using Bash um, to create all the data. Uh, from an, in an empty geo server. So the things, the things I'm going to be showing, um, I'm using Docker Compose to tie these, these three components together. It's um, Postgres. Um, it's an existing image that was created. Um, it's out on Docker Hub. Um, a geo server, uh, we're, I'm building it off of a Tomcat image, which is uh, then uh, the geo server war is placed into, and there's some optimizations um, made to the configuration. Um, then I'm going to be showing uh, the actual image mosaic configuration files, um, some WMS query examples using uh, temporal and attribute filters, um, setting up the 
image mosaic and seeding it uh, by making a, some rest calls and then um, a demo of the application, the OGC preview application exposing that data. So I'm going to switch over to my terminal. Now, I'm using, uh, how many of you are familiar with Docker? Okay, so a little less than half. So Docker is really just a way to have a, um, a single image file that can be shared. Um, they, they are declarative, you will describe individual layers um, that, that constitute the entire Docker image, and the layers are basically just commands that you would run um, in a terminal, uh, things like yum install, change permissions, add files, things like that. And so once, the, once all those steps have been run, you, you get out a Docker image. And so I'm gonna be using Docker images um, that contain the, the different components and then Docker Compose to tie them together. And Docker Compose is actually a Python package that is just tying those different um, containers together. It will uh, do things like map ports, um, take volumes and um, make them accessible to your running uh, images which are called containers. So um, I'm gonna do docker compose up dash D. Oh. So I'm, I am using docker beta. So if any of you are familiar with using uh, docker on Mac, this may be, this is new. So I just got in this a few days ago so I've been trying it out. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, so I'm gonna type docker compose up again. The daemon is running, so it's starting up my, my three uh, Docker instances. So what, what I have done here is, let me show you my compose file. Can you see that? No. See that in the back? Is that better? That better? Yeah. All right. So here's my three three images I'm using. So I've got image Cartosa Postgis, um, a build geo server. So when I use there's two different directives. Um, there's this build and image directive. So the build one means okay, relative to my current location, um, find this directory and build a Docker file which is in it, which describes all the steps needed to make the image. So some are remote and some are local. Um, so PostGIS is exposing this, this port, 5432, the standard PostGIS port. Uh, GeoServe is exposing 8080, uh, the standard Tomcat port. Um, and the preview image, which is really just Apache running with some static content in it, is exposing port 80. So uh, these port exposures are not necessary on these images uh, or these running containers because I am linking in the other containers into them. So, PostGIS is needed by GeoServer. So I'm linking PostGIS in internally to the GeoServer. So when I create a data store in GeoServer, it's going to be able to say, I want to connect to database PostGIS, and it will connect to the PostGIS container that's running. Um, and in the same fashion, uh, Apache is set up to reverse proxy GeoServer, and therefore it's going to be able to route um, the GeoServer alias to the uh, running GeoServer. Um, so that's my compose file. That's what, that's, that's what describes the three containers and how they're, they're linked together. And there's also things like volume mounts. So I'm, I am exposing volumes on my host, directories on my host into these containers so that if I stop the containers and start them back up again or destroy the containers and recreate them, uh, the data is persistent. So I have these these three containers up and running now. So let's, let's go ahead and also, well, let's also look at the image mosaic configuration real quick. Um, that is, so how many of you have configured GeoServer to serve up data as an, with an image mosaic backend? Okay, just a few of you. So the documentation is actually fairly detailed on this. Um, on the GeoServer, uh, in the GeoServer documentation. But I ran into quite a few things that were either um, not documented in the main documentation or um, some things that I couldn't find any documentation short of looking at code. So here, 
is the this is the master definition file for an image mosaic. So if you so if you're familiar with configuring GeoServer, most of it is done by way of the web, web UI, the admin UI. Um, this portion is not. So if you want a time series um, uh, capable image mosaic, you need to time a time a time attribute, and the time attributes are only extracted uh, from the file name. So this collect time is just the name of the field that's going to be stored in the index. This is not. Um, any header or any information from the geo server. Um, here's the, the schema that's going to be stored either in a, a local uh, space, uh, shape file or in PostJS. I'm going to do it in PostJS. The reason being a shape file, if you guys are familiar with the format, uh, the underlying limitation on time precision. It drops anything more than a date. So if you have um, times during the day that you want that much precision, it will be lost in shape files. Uh, so I'm going to store it in PostJS. Uh, so the three different fields here, location, that's just the file system location that GeoServer is going to look up the file, collect time, uh, that's going to store our time, and file name. I'll, you'll see later why I do that. That is not going to store anything but the uh, file name itself, not the full path. Uh, so here's how it gets the information for the timestamp. These timestamp file name extractor SPI classes are what take a reg regular expression, which is defined in another file that I will show, and extract that from the file name to place into this field. Um, I'm also doing the same thing using a string extractor to get the file name. A couple things to note, I am setting an indexing directory. So I'm setting the indexing directory because I want to store my data outside of the directory where my config lives. Uh, you can leave this um, blank, and if, if you have uh, files within that directory, it will, uh, it will actually, I believe by default, recursively process directories beneath it. Um, since I want to be able to uh, blow away my config and recreate it, I'm, I've put them in a uh, sibling directory. So I'm specifying where that, where that data lives. So, time extraction. So, I'm specifying a regular expression that's going to grab um, digits, eight digits, an underscore, and another six digits. You see I'm specifying a format parameter. This was something that I, uh, the only place I found is, is, is in the code. Uh, so, these are Java formats um, that will take a string and a non, I think the only format that works by default without this piece is a ISO 8601 format. So if it's not in ISO 8601 format, it just won't work. So that, that will let you do any, any format that has any arbitrary values that, that you want to filter out. And for the file name regex, I'm just going to grab everything. So this does not include the extension, but the whole file name will be pulled in. Now data store properties, if you don't specify this file, it will store all of your image mosaic index in a shapefile. A um, couple things to note. Um, actually, I may not have it set here. That's probably set, yeah, that's set back in the indexer. But if you have an existing schema in place uh, or an existing table in place, you, there is a setting in the indexer properties file that you can say, please don't use uh, hibernate to create that table for me. Use the existing schema. All right, so we have, we should have a geo server up and running. And I have already, uh, last night I loaded data for Veers for a few days. So here's some examples of uh, making requests against our image mosaic. So I've created a layer um, in the mosaic uh, namespace called uh, Veers, uh, day night, Veers DNB. And I'm specifying the time parameter. Now you guys pro in the back probably can't see that at all. Um, so I'm just going to jam it in here. And here's the time parameter at uh, the time parameter that I'm specifying on the query string. So I'm saying 
Uh, this is uh, ISO 8601 duration. So I'm saying give me everything from uh, 0, 100 hours on uh, 430 to uh, 0, 100 on 0501. So if we go, go back and hit send, we should get a day's worth of data all displayed together. So is that back? Hello? Is it the, the speakers for the room? Hello? Yeah, I don't see the light looks like it's off. I'll speak up. Can you hear me all right in the back? OK. All right. So we see here everything from yesterday, or um, from, the, from the 30th. Uh, now if we want to, say we want to see data for just the last 24 hours. So this was something that was added. Um, some work we did, actually, that was submitted back to GeoServer. It's in uh, GeoServer 2.7 that allows you to, to do relative time queries. So if you're familiar with using time, uh, the time parameter before uh, 2.7, the only way that you could make queries was with an absolute uh, time. So there's this present keyword that's been added that will take the GeoServer server time and replace that present uh, keyword with it. So, if, so now, essentially what it's saying, from this time on the server, back a day, give me all the data. Hello? Is that working? All right, great. So, so this uh, it looks like there's only one uh, image that's returned. This is getting late in the day. Um, so now if I want to, say I want to get a specific uh, geotiff out of this mosaic. I'm going to, now this is an example using the, the admin REST API. I'm actually just pulling information out of the index granules endpoint. Um, I could have created another uh, layer in GeoServer that would have been non-time enabled, and then I could have just used something like a SQL filter. But this filter value is exactly the same as a SQL uh, filter, so I think it serves the purpose. So here I'm using file name, which is that additional attribute I created, and I'm saying give me the geotiff that is this geotiff here. And so if we make this request, we can see this is actually going to give us the, the footprint of uh, whatever features, feature was returned, um, which, and here's all the metadata. So we can see the actual file system location that the GeoServer has for it, uh, the time of the collect, and then the file name, which is what we queried against. So what if we have uh, data coming in uh, while our GeoServer is running. So when we, we stood up this GeoServer, it went, went through the directory that we had specified and harvested all of the, the images um, and, and added them to the mosaic index. Um, so say we have a, a, like a data processing system running and we want to be able to add files to the mosaic as they come in. So I'm going to, using the, the same granules API, I'm going to delete a file. I'm going to delete the file actually that I uh, pulled in the previous step. So I get a 200 OK response code back. So if I get that same feature again, OK, the image is gone, and we got no results back. So I'm going to add it, add it again. We'll get a 202 accepted, which means, OK, I'm off processing. And then if we make a get request again, we should see that it is added back. Now, you probably probably didn't see the number before, but this, is, this has been incremented now. So the, the other image is gone. Um, all right, so I am going to show, oh, OK, thanks. Um, so I'm going to show this in a more interactive way. Using, using the OGC preview application. So since I'm using Docker, it's mapping, it's mapping um, all of the container ports to my host operating system, so I'm just going to go to localhost. Awesome, thank you. So I'm going to go to localhost, which is 
and on port 80, which is where my Apache server is running. And I apologize, the screen size doesn't work so well for the, the header here. Uh, but so I, if you look here on the left, I am, I, I have two layers. So this is going off and just making a, a get capabilities call, WMS get capabilities call, and seeing what data is in this um, geo server. So the, I also have some vector data in here just for, for demo purposes. But so here's our Veers day night band data. And by default, um, my time range is set to the last day. So let's say I wanted to see, I gotta go back a couple of days now because that data is stale. And I'm going to set the end time to be an, uh, a couple hours. So these, these images, they, they don't have one for every hour. So I'm gonna step through here And you'll see as I step forward in time, let me zoom in just a tad. So as I step forward in time, you'll see that they, you can see where the sensor's moving across the earth. So, so with, with very little, really one command to stand this up and, and calling a bash script, I was able to uh, pulled down a bunch of Veers data, uh, which, was, which was then loaded into uh, GeoServer, and then we can serve it up with WMS. And of course, since this is WMS, you can use it in any client. Now, clients like uh, QGIS and ArcMap don't really deal especially well with WMS time, um, but you can construct a, a full query that will allow you to filter it down, down by time. Um, one other thing I wanted to show was, so, and this is all up on GitHub. Um, I'll have the link at the end of the presentation. You can do all this at home. I'm, the, it's, it's really three commands to stand everything up that I've done here. Everything is in shell scripts and in uh, stored configurations. Um, so here, is, here are all the steps that I took to, to pull the Veers data down. So I, I set a directory that will be, that this is running within my geo server container, and, G, and GDAL is installed. So I, pull, I, I set the location for where my, my data is coming from. I, I make a wget, a recursive wget, and filter some data out. All I wanted was um, the, specifically the day night band TIFFs. So I pull the day night band TIFFs down, um, and then I run some G, a couple GDAL commands on it. So this is how I get the performance to be to be rather quick. Uh, there's no caching. It's all, it's all inner tiles and overviews inside of the geotiffs. So um, I run GDAL translate to, to create the inner tiles and, and then the overviews. So with, with that, uh, and, and I've seen that you can generally have 100 to uh, 50 to 100 tiffs and get it on a decent server, and this is just running on my local machine, on a decent server, uh, say, you know, 16 gigs of memory or something like that, you can get it to do one or two second draw times for like full world um, imagery. Um, and, and here at the bottom I am making the, uh, I'm copying all of my image mosaic config into uh, the GeoServer data directory and then I am making REST, REST API calls to um, add the data store, which points to that image mosaic config, and then to also create the layer, uh, the time-enabled layer that exposes the data um, so you can access it uh, from WMS. Um, so that's a lot of different things. Um, but yeah, so are there any questions? Anything you'd like to have more? Yep, go ahead. It should absolutely be possible. So what you would need to do is you would just create two time values. So the question was, can I do instantaneous time or can I do a coverage? So a beginning and end time, yes. That should, be, that should be doable. I haven't actually tried that, but I believe all you would have to do is create um, two regex files 
um, you would have your your file name would have to have a way to delineate which was the start and end time. But as long as you could come up with a regex that would that would do that, I think then inside of GeoServer. So if I, if say if we go over to GeoServer. And uh, just as a side note, everything um, has been proxied through Apache so that I didn't have to deal with cores issues because that web application was making uh, AJAX request. And if I didn't have it proxied, then I wouldn't have um, been able to get um, the Git capabilities back. Um, so if I go to layers and look at my Veers layer and I go to the dimensions tab. So right here, I just have time set to enabled. Um, normally, this has a drop down for both start and end time that says, hey, pick your start time, hey, pick your end time. I don't know if it would sh realize that, hey, you've got two times now and to give you that option, but it obviously doesn't here. So that would be something to try. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. Most of the data that I've, I've seen has always been like snapshot, collect time. So. Obviously, the data that you're seeing is, is not instantaneous because it's composite from scans, but yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the question is uh, what it takes to get this um, started from what you've seen today. Yeah, all of this is on GitHub. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and bring this up now. Uh, please don't start running any of these commands now because this is going to pull down like eight gigs bytes of data like right off the bat. Um, so that's the URL, um, and this presentation is all on the the uh, schedule. So if you go here, you'll you can see the link. Um, and, and yeah, everything the the containers that are are custom. There, those, those Docker files that describe them are all in this repo. Um, actually, if we go there now, the slides are also here. They're, they're linked right here. So it's, it's, everything is here. Um, but build, you run, this, you run this build command. That will create the containers that are described in this repository. Uh, compose up will um, instantiate both the just constructed ones and the remote ones, pull them all down and start them up. And then these two commands will set up the modus data that, is the, that was in that um, preview app and load it into Postgres and um, expose the layer in GeoServer. And then the Veers one will do the same. The modus one is very small. It's like, uh, I want to say it's, it's a few hundred K. Um, and this one, like I said, it's, it's about eight gigabytes. Uh, for, they roll the data off. So if you run this thing, it's only going to retrieve what they have but I think it goes back five or six days. Um, this is something to note. If you are on Mac or Windows, uh, the current public way to use Docker is Docker Toolbox. And Docker Toolbox um, uses VirtualBox virtualization to allow you to use Docker, because Docker was built um, for Linux. Um, it requires Linux uh, capabilities to function. So. Um, this step will be needed if you're on Mac or Windows uh, for the short term. I, I imagine within a month or two, they will have the native Docker clients on Mac and Windows because they're in beta now. That's what I'm using here. Um, and here's an explanation of wh why, why it behaves the way it does. Um, I, can, I was also going to show real quick. Um, So that was using that was for um, raster data. If so, I, I, I did have Modus loaded in here as well. Um, and Modus, the the data set comes down as a shape file, so it's it's only date precision. Um, but you can you could select some data here, and then this will be using WFS actually um, to to pull back the the metadata for it. So you can see. You can see all of the actual attributes of the features. Um, and then once, you're, once you do this locally, it's actually just searching within the table. So if I say 126631, I get the fire ID there. But 
Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, thank you. Appreciate it.